Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 4. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. God, they're not going to listen to me. Yeah, right. God spoke to you, Moses. Alibi him. He's trying to get out of it. And the Lord said unto him, you know, the people are not going to listen to me, okay? What is in thy hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. All right? You're not going to listen to me. What's in your hand? A rod. What was that going to do with anything? Throw it down. Comes a snake. He runs from it. I would too. I tell my wife today, I said, I'd be back in Egypt away from that snake. Where'd you go? I'm in Egypt already. He is afraid of it. And then yet God says, pick it up by the tail. He put forth his hand and caught it and became a rod again. Now it's interesting. There's a lot of meat here. Okay. And where to start? Thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. The rod's a serpent. God is going to use the serpent, the battle axe, to beat the disobedient children of Israel. As a father loves his child, so does God love his children, and he's going to beat them. When you read that psalm, that's about Israel in the wilderness again. We have, as far as the serpent, Genesis 3, you have Eve. He deceived. Exodus 4 and 7 chapters. Moses. He becomes a sign of God's power. In Revelation, he imitates God's power. Numbers 21, it becomes a type of salvation, the healing of Jesus Christ. In 2 Kings 18, it becomes an idol. So, Genesis 3, we see a serpent. Exodus 4, we see a serpent. That's interesting. That rod. That rod is used by a shepherd to, to tap the sheep, to count the sheep. It's used as a weapon against other animals. It's his tool. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. And it said Moses fled before. Who would not flee before a snake? And yet with the power of God, it said he put forth. He has gone f from, from to forth. Get the fact that even Moses being afraid, God says something. Okay, I'll do it. He was afraid of that snake. But as 
at, at the word of the mouth of God, he said, and Moses, okay, Moses defied his fears. Obedient. Obedient. I wish I had that power. I'm and I may joke about it, but listen, if that was me, it's not going to happen, but if that was me, you ain't not going to get me to grab that serpent. I don't care. I hate snakes. The best snake to me will not only be a dead snake, but a snake that's not only dead, but has been burned in a fire. Completely gone. All right, so came a rod again. As if you look at that rod, like, whoa. I bet you in the middle of the night he opened up his eyes saying, you still a rod? <laughs> That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. That rod become the serpent is a sign to the children of Israel. And it refers back to the fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That rod. Shepherds. We're not done. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. Put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Ah! And they knew about leprosy. He knew exactly. Remember, he was... Trained of all the arts and science and medication of all of Pharaoh. When that hand came out, that's leprosy. We got Satan. We got leprosy. This is the first sickness in the Bible. The first sickness mentioned in the Bible is leprosy. And he said, God said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out. Plucked it out. He took it out before. Now he's plucking it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as his other flesh. The first healing. The first sickness and the first healing. 100% healing. It's God's power over sin. Leprosy pictures sin. It starts off as a little thing in your body and it starts eating away. It starts destroying. It kills nerves. Naaman's the only man in the Old Testament ever to be healed of leprosy. And when Jesus shows up in Israel, what is the sign? Leprosy is running rampant in Israel. Yeah, she had it for seven days. For disobeying God, rebelling against God's man. All right, so the serpent, the rod to the serpent, his hand becomes leprous. It shall come to pass if they will not believe thee. He's ruined Moses' alibis. <laughs> Neither hearken to the voice of the first sign. That rod turning into a snake and going back to a rod is a voice. The first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. The hand turned to leprosy and coming out healed is a voice. And John the Baptist, when he sets off what we call the New Testament, sets off as a voice. Signs speak to Jews and Jews only. Don't get messed up in a charismatic mind. That don't say nothing. It says you're an idiot and you have not read your scriptures. It's almost bad as a, as a seven-day of Baptist church saying on their sign, well, oh, we're going to have Bible study Tuesday night. Really? You haven't studied your Bible. We saw one the other day, funny, Roman Catholic Church saying they have Bible study a day of the week. 
All right, let's start with Matthew 5 in your Bible study. All yeah, right. So they are voices. They speak. They speak of God, the power of God. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe these two signs, neither hearken unto the voice that thou shalt take unto the water of the river, Nile River, and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the dry river out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So get some Nile River, pour it out, it turns into blood. And we're not gonna say nothing much on this because it's gonna happen again. We'll come back to this. But alright, so we got interesting things here. Israel. Now, speaking of the children of Israel of God, if you want a national flag, get rid of that Star of David junk. That may be the Star of Ephraim. You need to get either a picture of a bush that's on fire. You need to get an instrument of a picture likened to the U.S. medical symbol of a rod becoming a snake. Or as you see warning signs of corrosion that your hand has become leprous and healed. Or another would be water turning to blood. Which is going to happen in the tribulation period. That star of Rivran. That, that, that's, that's a... This is the signs. This is the foundation of the children of Israel as a nation. Jews require a sign and here they are. And they all point to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, is it John chapter 3, as Moses lifted up the serpent, there he is. Jesus healed the Jews, there's the leprosy, and turned the water into blood. Jesus said, I am the water of life. And by his blood, not the water, by the blood of Jesus Christ are we made whole and saved. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, after all that, oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither hereto nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. He's albine again. As we get to Exodus, will you remember this verse here? As he gets up to, up to Pharaoh, blah, 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 blah. And... What we're going to see here, too, is we're going to see, okay, Aaron is going to be your spokesman. We're going to read that today, Lord willing. I mean, the rapture will happen. You don't have to worry about the hurricane. But as we get later on in Exodus and later on into the life of Moses, he's going to come out and he's going to do some great speaking. He's lying. That's what he's doing. Now, he may be slow in the Hebrew, but he's been trained. Been doing pretty good so far. And the Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Oh God, it evolved, didn't it? Or who, who maketh the dumb? Or the deaf? Or the seeing? Or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now there you go. Look at that. My friend is blind. Who, who made him blind? What's it say? You remember there was a man, he had, he had a, I think he was blind. And the disciples walking by said, Jesus, who made this man blind? Was it his parents? Was it God? And Jesus said, it is the power of God that this man. Now the rabbis will teach that if a child is born blind or deaf or dumb, it's because of the parents, sin, the, the, uh, excuse me, take that back. It's because the, the child sinned in the womb. That's, that's ridiculous. What can a child sin in the, in the womb? And that's why they asked Jesus that question. But one of the things that can cause blind, deaf, or dumb is God says, hey, that's how that child is going to be born. Deaf, dumb, blindness can be caused by what the mother does while that child is in the womb. Or the father. And that child could do something physical in that womb to cause these things. And then Satan can do it. 
And if Satan did it, Job 1 and 2, God allowed it. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Now that's important, but we're going to come to an important one in a few verses. And he said, oh my Lord. Does it really sound like he wants to do this? Send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. You, Moses. <laughs> you know, he's saying, God, send somebody else. I really don't want this. Because he's already told Moses, you're going to Pharaoh, let my people go. And he's going to tell you, no way, Jose. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, it's going to be battles and wars until they come out. They're going to come out, but ooh, I'm going to stretch out my hand. And Moses is like, I don't want that. If you're called into ministry by God, and there's a way you can talk your way out of it, you do it. Because you're going to have a lot of responsibilities. The Bible teaches if you want to be a disciple, you better realize what it takes to be. A disciple is not someone who's saved. All disciples are saved, but not all saved are disciples. When you want to learn and do what God tells you to do, you're going to take a beating. Now, you can get saved and, you know, live the rest of your life miserable for the world and Satan and be lazy. Okay, fine. But if you want to take a stand and be a Bible-believing, active Christian, that's what God wants Moses to do. And Moses already has an idea that this is not going to be easy. And when you look at Moses' life, brother, it ain't. I like the word ain't. If my mama hears that, I'm sorry, mom. Now watch this. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. God is getting angry with Moses. He's getting angry with the alibi. He gets angry at us when we try not to do what he wants us to do. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite? Ooh, that's the first time that shows up. The Levite. Aaron is of Levi. Thy brother. So we know Moses has a brother. We know he has a sister. His brother's name is Aaron. We know about his mother. And we'll get with his family as we move on. And we will get to it. Alright, so Moses has a brother named Aaron. I know that he can speak well. That, that shoots down Moses' alibi. I can't speak. Alright, I'm going to give you your brother Aaron. You know what the problem with this with Moses is? By his alibi? You remember, the, you remember the one time that Aaron stepped in and took over the, the, the first Jewish church of Mount Sinai? Where Moses broke all Ten Commandments in one shot? Now, had Moses not alibied, Aaron would not be put in that position. Okay, you want Aaron? I tell you, you don't want Aaron. <laughs> He's going to cause some trouble for you. But, I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh. He's already on his way. God knew already. Foreknowledge of God. I know Aaron's, Aaron's on his way to Moses. I wonder why. And you got to look at it. He says, Aaron's coming. So God already knew what Moses is going to do. He already planned it. Aaron's here. Get moving. I need you. I need you to go get your brother and bring him back. And Aaron's going to cause... Not, Aaron's a wonderful guy, but he's going to cause trouble for Moses. He's going to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. For knowledge of God. All right, now, you want to mark 15 and 16. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. He shall be thy spokesman unto the people. He shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of mouth. 
and thou shalt be to him instead of God. There is, forgive me for else, inspiration. And when somebody says, well, man wrote the Bible, yeah. God spoke to Moses, Moses spoke to Aaron, and Aaron spoke to Pharaoh. And you got another story of this in Jeremiah. Jeremiah spoke to Baruch, and Baruch wrote it down, and they said to Baruch, where'd you get this? Well, I had my pen in hand. Jeremiah spoke, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, and I wrote down what he wrote. That's inspiration. What's the difference between textbooks and Shakespeare? God spoke to the man and told him what to write. Peter tells us about David. The Holy Spirit spoke by David. So there's inspiration. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand. Remember that rod, Moses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you ever held it out. Wherewith thou shalt do signs. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.11, I believe it is. Jews require a sign because this is the beginning of their nation. They were started by signs. What's the very first sign, really, of the Jews? An old lady, an old man are going to have a baby. They're incapable of not. I mean, you want another flag picture? Picture a dead womb and dry breast. I mean, you want to go so far, but that's Sarah. She's the mother of all the Jews. And that took God's miracle. That took a sign. And Moses went and returned to Jethro. His father-in-law. I think we already talked about the many names of him. And said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee. Joseph, he goes to Pharaoh. My dad told me not, not to bury me here. But may I have permission to go and bury my father? Proper. Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Um... Did Moses forget something? I had a meeting with God out there in the wilderness as a sheep, and he wants me to go back to my people and call them. He forgot that. I want to go see if my brethren are still alive. Well, that's not the whole story, Moses. What's going on? He left out a lot. And mark that in the Bible, where God told uh, uh, Balaam and the, the, the Balak, man, God says so much and so much is left out. <laughs> and it gets chopped off by a third, by a third, by a third. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. Now let's go over to Matthew chapter 2, verse 20. And you won't believe this one. Matthew 2, 20. In Matthew 2, 20 we read, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. Like reverse. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Isn't that interesting? A type of Jesus Christ. Now types doesn't go all the way. He's telling Moses go to go to Egypt, and God's calling Joseph out of Egypt, the, the adopted father of Jesus. But so, and Moses took his wife and his sons. You got more than one, and set them upon an ass. And he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. We'll go to verse 2 again. And the Lord said to him, What is that in thy hand? He said, It's a rod. And verse 20, He has given that rod that he owned to God. The rod of God. Didn't it become a serpent? And yet, it's God's. God has control over the serpent. Don't be afraid of the serpent. 
God's got control of him. Now, don't mess with the serpent. Don't antagonize the serpent. I met many fools in my time that they've been destroyed because I'm going to get him with a water gun and an old smutty face and stuff like that. I learned from time to begin, don't mess with Satan. But don't worry about him. The Bible says we can know his ways. We can know that by the word of God. So Moses turned that rod over to God. And the Lord said to Moses, When thou goest to return unto Egypt, see, see, you see that word a lot in the book of Revelation, see. See that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh. What? The rod, the leprosy, and the water, the blood. Do these things, wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. You're holding the rod, the hand in the bosom, and you're pouring out the water. The hand of Moses is very powerful in the hand of God. So, and I'm not saying this as a joke either. Moses is a handyman of God. When we get into those plagues, look at what Moses does with his hands. And Aaron, which I have put in thy hand, but I will harden his heart. Oh, oh, great God. Send me out on a commission. And then tell me I'm not going to get the results. Where are your followers, people will tell us? There are none. Only those that really do not do what the Bible says have followers. Now, we will see few results, but not most results, that he, will, that he shall not let the people go. Now, this is a foreknowledge of God. This is not Calvinism. They will say that God has hardened Pharaoh's heart for the purpose to destroy Pharaoh and put him into hell. No, God already knew Pharaoh would not listen. And on the attack that God knows of the foreknowledge of what Pharaoh is going to do, he uses that for his glory. Judas could have said, no, I ain't doing it. But God, Jesus Christ, knowing the thoughts in the heart of Judas, picked Judas because they knew that Judas would do the job that would be called for. Adolf Hitler was known by God to know, you will destroy my people as a punishment and you'll do a good job. President Roosevelt? I know you ain't going to destroy my people. I know you ain't going to beat my people. I know you're not going to chastise my people. I know you will take your troops and you will help my people. So I will put you there to go over and attack Hitler in Germany. And you will rescue my people. And I bet you Hitler did not know he was being used by God. And Roosevelt was being used by God. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. Ooh, what other nation is God? Say? He calls Israel my bride. God. Even my firstborn. Wow. Almost like Jesus Christ. And I say unto thee, Pharaoh, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, which he will, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And that's going to happen. God has already pre-warned Pharaoh of the consequences of not adhering to the word of God. And where have you seen this before? Do not eat of the tree of that fruit, lest you die. And what happened? They died. We died. What happens to Pharaoh? His son died. Why? Because we will not listen to the word of God. Even myself. Uh, here's interest, 24 to 28. And it came to pass by the way in the end 
Where have you seen that word before? <laughs> oh, man. You can't get away from Jesus, can you? At least they found room. That the Lord met him. And sought to kill him. And Zephora took a sharp stone. And you're reading, if you haven't read this before, like, ooh, it's mounting up. What's going on here? Gonna kill him? And cut off the foreskin of her son. So that him that's going to be killed in 24 was the son. I forget his name. And cast it at his feet, which would be Moses, and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Now, we got a problem here. Because first of all, let's go to Genesis 17, 14. We're back in circumcision again. Why is that, that circumcision, and I don't want to get gross, keep showing up? And we'll start in verse 9. Genesis 17, 9. This is important. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee, including Moses, in their generation. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now verse 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of the foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And God's over here saying, Exodus, i got to kill that boy. And Zephora is like, I better protect my boy. Moses, what is your problem? You know the Jewish thing more than I do. You were supposed to do something about our son. And you say, well, that you're way out of fetch. That is not correct. All right. Let's go to Joshua 5, 2. And Joshua will tell us what happened. Joshua chapter 5, verse 2. In Joshua 5, 2. Oh, my nose, forgive me. And that signs is 1 Corinthians 1, 22. In Joshua 5, 2, it says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, The Lord is speaking. Make these sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Joshua made him sharp knives, and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. Now that's gross. Think about that for a moment. This is the cause. All right, this is why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males. Even all the men of war died in the wilderness. By the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. Everyone that came out of Egypt were circumcised under Moses. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, the wilderness journey, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not circumcised. So when they were in Egypt, the Jews were circumcising their children. You wonder if they did that to Moses. Slipped the operation in there. I don't know. Aaron would be circumcised. Only in the wilderness, they didn't do nothing. They didn't follow God's circumcision law. And Joshua, when he sets in the land, he's got to do it because it wasn't done. Yeah. And Moses is supposed to circumcise his son, and he didn't. And it's something about Zephora. She knows what the, what is missing. And she does it herself to save her son's life. 
Moses was a little backsliding there for a while. And Moses is a man of Aloha, and he didn't circumcise his son. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All right, so he, uh, surely the blood of her husband died to me. So he let him go, the son, God let him go. Then she said, a bloody husband thou art because of circumcision. And that little circumcision, that's in the Bible. And, and the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So now we know why, Mo, why Aaron's on his way. See, 27 is written after the fact. God told Moses, Aaron's on his way. Okay, here's what happened. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God, Sinai, and kissed him. So Aaron was told by God, Go meet your brother. He needs help. And I know what kind of help you're going to give him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord. I hope he did better than what he did to Jethro. Who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded. This is the second time. First was chapter 4 verse 2 through 9. The serpent, the leprosy, and the water, the blood. He does them before Aaron. Verse 28. The Bible says in the law, out of two or three, it shall be established. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Gathered them all up. And Aaron spake all the words which, Mo, which the Lord had spoken unto Moses. Verse 15 and 16. It's approved by God. It's inspired. And did the signs in the sight of the people. This is the third time those signs have been done. One, two, three. And the people believed. First Corinthians one twenty two. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Ooh -wee. But you're gonna get hard. <laughs> They're gonna get angry. Lord willing, next time we study.